When you think of coasters, you think of big amusement parks. These are the companies that specialize in building rides. They have the money to do so, and thousands flock in every day. But then you have those places that only have one coaster, and there are totally different reasons for this. Today, let's look at the best standalone coasters around the world. For this video, I'm only looking at coasters that are still active. Speed the Ride was at the Sahara between 2000 and 2011, and most people would agree it was the best coaster in Vegas. Ring Racer was another launch coaster, operating at Nürburgring, a racetrack in Germany. This had tons of problems, operated for 4 days in 2013, and that was it. Wisconsin Dells didn't just have Mount Olympus, it also had Timber Falls Adventure Park. This is still there, but their SNS wooden coaster is gone. Avalanche operated from 2004 to 2017. Isla San Marcos Theme Park in Mexico had one coaster in its history, and you may recognize this one. It was Texas Tornado, aka Zonga, the Schwarzkopf Looper. After this left Discovery Kingdom, it landed here between 2008 and 2014. Also, right now, Silver Comet is all by itself at Niagara Amusement Park. It wasn't always that way. This park closed down in 2020 and two of its coasters were removed. Now, Silver Comet is waiting on two relocated coasters to open, so this won't be alone for long. And for that, I'm leaving it off this list. Number 15. The Santa Monica West Coaster at Pacific Park This pier dates back to 1909, having some rides all the way through the 1930s. But those were sold off, and it wouldn't be until 1996 that we would see another park located here. This would be called Pacific Park, including one of the most iconic coasters in the world, the Santa Monica West Coaster, a Morgan family coaster standing 55 feet tall. Winding its way down is 1,300 feet of track, featuring two helices. You will find this coaster and the whole pier on TV whenever there's a national sporting event in Los Angeles, and they want a shot of something cool. This was also that Leviathan coaster in Grand Theft Auto. It's a pretty mild ride, but it's a lot of fun. Number 14, Big Apple Coaster at New York, New York, and Vegas. This coaster is an icon right there on the strip, very visible to anyone passing by, standing right there in front of the New York City skyline. This stands 203 feet tall, its max drop is 144 feet and covers an impressive 4,777 feet of track. This goes through two inversions, a vertical loop and a dive loop. It's a stat monster, but it's a togo coaster, and its layout is pretty bad. In 2021, it got new trains and that made the ride much better. No more slamming your neck around those bad transitions, but it doesn't make the layout good. Way too many shallow hills and turns after those inversions. It's fun to ride an iconic coaster, but that's about it. Number 13, Prairie Screamer at Prairie Playland. This is a little carnival style park located inside Trader's Village. This is a giant flea market. You just gotta walk to the back to find all the rides. This park finally got its first coaster in 2022, the Prairie Screamer. This used to operate at Scandia, Ontario. There, it was just called Screamer, an ENF Highmiler. That park shut down in 2019. Prairie Playland saved it, and it reopened just a couple months ago. I rode this in late January, and even though it was freezing cold, it was running great and I enjoyed my back row ride. I got some good airtime over all those hills. The track is so thin, but it doesn't feel janky. There are lots of good head choppers, and I recommend you spend the 5 bucks and ride this. It's only a few minutes away from Six Flags Over Texas, so it's barely out of your way. Number 12. All of the mountain coasters out there. You can find these all over the place, and they seem to operate in two settings. Sometimes you find them at ski resorts. Other times, you find them as roadside attractions, especially in tourist towns with great mountains, like Pigeon Forge, Tennessee or Branson, Missouri. You can just pull up, pay $10 to $20 for a ride, and enjoy. You sit in a sled, either by yourself or with one other person. These lift you up a mountain using a cable lift, and you wind down to the ground, being able to control your own speed. These are long rides. They offer great views. They're generally affordable, and they're a lot of fun. I have ridden four of these, and I haven't been disappointed yet. Number 11. Iron Shark at Galveston Pleasure Pier. This pier has been around for decades. It was home to the original Pleasure Pier going all the way back to 1943, closing in 1961 when Hurricane Carla destroyed it. This pier was also home to the USS Flagship Hotel, opening in 1965 and being demolished in 2008 after Hurricane Ike rolled through Houston. The new Pleasure Pier opened in 2012 with a mess of rides, including one coaster, that being this Gerslauer Eurofighter called Iron Shark. This is a pretty basic model, the same one you'll find at Six Flags Darien Lake, standing 100 feet tall, hitting 52 miles per hour, covering 1,246 feet of track, but packing in three inversions. 
Also, that first drop is 95 degrees. So this is one extreme, but short ride on the pier. Number 10, Giant Dipper at Belmont Park. This park dates back to 1925. Opened by sugar kingpin John Spreckles, mainly to attract people to the Mission Bay area of San Diego and help them sell land. One of their original rides was Giant Dipper. This wooden coaster stands 73 feet tall, hits 55 miles per hour, covers 2,600 feet of track, and almost 100 years later still provides a great ride. This is not as intense as I was expecting, but it was also more smooth than I was expecting. Belmont Park has had other coasters come and go between the mid-50s and mid-70s, but this is the last one standing, and it seems to be the only one in their foreseeable future. Number 9. Desperado at Buffalo Bills Resort and Casino This resort opened in 1994, right on the Nevada-California state line, and while all those people from Los Angeles are looking for a place to gamble their first buck, they may be drawn in by the giant aero hyper coaster wrapped around the building. Once the world's tallest coaster, it stands 209 feet tall, but its first drop goes underground, maxing out at 225 feet, hitting 80 miles per hour, covering 5,843 feet of track, mostly shallow airtime hills and ending with a helix. It's a long, interesting ride, though I wouldn't say it has a great layout. It has tons of speed, some airtime, offers amazing views, tons of ride time, but its layout is holding it back. A lot of meandering around the hotel parking lot. This has been closed since 2019, and it's not all that clear when it will reopen. Number 8. Gekion Live Coaster at Tokyo Joypolis Joypolis is a chain of indoor parks created by Sega. These parks have arcade games and rides, and at the one in Tokyo, they have this Gerslauer Spinning Coaster. Not only is it partially a shooting dark ride, it also has a tire launch, and this was the first ever spinning coaster with an inversion, that being an inline twist. It's not even 1,000 feet long, only stands 16 feet tall, only hits about 24 miles per hour, but it's different, I give it that much. Number 7. Surf Coaster Leviathan at Sea Paradise This is a park right on Tokyo Bay, and Surf Coaster Leviathan is actually built right into the bay. This did have a partner from 2001 to 2005, but it's been mostly by itself since 1993. This is a monster Togo, 144 feet tall. The drop not nearly as big, so it only hits 47 miles per hour, over 4,000 feet of track, and two massive helices. The layout is kind of weird and doesn't look all that exciting, but its setting probably makes the ride interesting. This park is a combination of aquarium, shopping mall, hotel, marina, and amusement park, so that explains their lack of focus on coasters. Number 6. Switchback at ZDT's Amusement Park You can barely even call this a park. It's a family fun center that takes up a city block, opening in 2007 with some small rides and an arcade, then adding a go-kart track and water slides. And in 2014, they announced the impossible, they were going to cram a coaster into basically no land. The Gravity Group was able to build them a 64-foot wooden coaster, and to maximize the ride time while saving space, they did what had never been done before, make this a wooden shuttle coaster. It would start off with a chain lift, heading down a 56-foot drop, go through some tight turns and sharp airtime hills, even cutting through an old grocery store. Then it goes up a vertical spike and does that all backwards, using a switch track at the end to get back to the station. Given the tiny plot of land, they did everything they could to make this an awesome coaster. Unless this place expands, or they get an SBS spinner, don't expect another coaster here. Number 5. Boardwalk Bullet at Key Mob Boardwalk In 1998, this boardwalk park opened along Galveston Bay. It would just feature some small rides and games until 2007, when the Gravity Group was called on to build a coaster. This would only have one acre to sit on, but they managed to fit a full-size wooden coaster here. Over 3,200 feet of track, 96 feet tall with a 92 foot drop, one of the most compact and twisted coasters ever built. This has made Kima Boardwalk a destination, many enthusiasts combining this boardwalk with Galveston Pleasure Pier. But 16 years later and Kima still has not built another coaster. Number 4. Wood Coaster at Night Valley This is part of a much larger resort called OCT East. This consists of Tea Stream Resort Valley, Wind Valley, and Night Valley. It has eight hotels and a Buddhist temple, and it opened in 2007 at the cost of 521 million US dollars. In 2011, they contracted GCI to build a massive wooden coaster, simply called Wood Coaster. This would be built up the side of a hill and work its way down, covering over 4,800 feet of track, and this layout looks like one of the best of all time. This is the only coaster at Night Valley and the OCT East Resort, and it has been for the last 12 years. Number three. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot I said these standalone coasters all had different circumstances, and this one is way different than most of the others. Epcot is a massive park at Disney World, the second one built back in 1982, following up the Magic Kingdom. 
It was supposed to be an actual city, a planned community run by Disney, but that was abandoned in favor of a theme park. It would feature futuristic rides and a world showcase, where you can walk from country to country along the back of the park. The nature of this park never really called for a roller coaster until 2022, when they got Vacoma to build this heavily themed dark ride spinning coaster. Covering almost 5,600 feet of track, having a launch and hitting 60 miles per hour, it's a very fun, state-of-the-art ride, and probably Epcot's only coaster for a long time. Number 2. Expedition Everest at Animal Kingdom Similar story as Guardians, but different. Animal Kingdom was the last Disney World Park to open in 1998, and in 2002, it was given two Revershawn spinning mouse coasters, Primeval Whirl. Then, four years later, they invested $100 million in a brand new coaster, built inside a fake Mount Everest, using two lift hills, a switch track, almost 3,900 feet of track, a 50 mile an hour top speed, and tons of theming. Expedition Everest would be the main draw of Animal Kingdom, and when Primeval World was shut down in 2020, Expedition Everest was left all by itself. Animal Kingdom doesn't have a ton of rides. It's more focused on its atmosphere, shows, and well-themed dark rides. So who knows if and when they'll get another coaster, but Expedition Everest is serving the park well. Number one, Zippin' Pippin' at Bay Beach. This is a public park in Green Bay, Wisconsin, opening in 1892, building its first coaster in 1901, then replacing that one with another one in 1929. This one closed down in 1936, and the park was left without a coaster for 75 years. In 2006, the park expanded to the west, new rides were added, and they were looking to build a new coaster. When Liberty Land closed in Memphis, Tennessee, the city tried to get their classic coaster Zip and Pippin moved to Bay Beach, famous for being Elvis Presley's favorite coaster. Having been abandoned for five years at that point, it was in no shape to move, so they hired the Gravity Group to build a replica. Zip and Pippin opened in 2011, charging $1 per ride, and it has so much Florida airtime throughout its course ending with one of the most insane ejector moments of all time. If you're in Green Bay, Wisconsin, you can just roll up to this public park, buy four tickets for a dollar, and ride one of the country's best coasters. That's hard to beat. That's all for the world's best standalone coasters. Let me know what you think of this list. It was a hard one to put together. There could be a good one that I easily overlooked. So if I did, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to drop a like. And if you're new here and love coasters, please give me a sub. Also, check out my links below for my Discord server, and my second channel where I post copyright free off ride footage, and my baseball channel if you also happen to love baseball. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.